that uh, we would like to hear from her more about her rather than I telling you. But this is all about positive uh, outcomes that we come through as a human. How we keep do living our journey is the most important aspect of this topic today. And we are, I am thrilled to once again saying that uh, Fiona Talton is our guest of honor today to do all the talking and sharing all her experiences. So welcome Fiona to, to this uh, amazing, our website and our uh, YouTube channel and also our media online, which is more about uh, doing and connecting with people and bringing people together to share their experiences. So I'm excited to welcome you. So welcome Fiona uh, to this uh, episode. Right. Episode. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me to um, speak to you today. So I've yeah. been looking forward to it. Yeah. So tell us something about a little bit about I know that you are very adventurous and as a human and when you grew up and how you grew up and what made you really so bold enough and like like every human is different. However, oh. tell us something about yourself that how you live your journey and right. what is your really driving force of your inner self that drives you to okay. the journey of your right. hmm. Okay, so, um, so I grew up in uh, the Bay of Islands in New Zealand. And as you mentioned earlier, my father was Kelly Talton, who... Mm. Um, his, his um, job basically as when I was a kid was that he scuba dived on shipwrecks around New Zealand for 20 years. And mm. my mother ran the, the family business, the Museum of Shipwrecks up in Waitangi. And, uh, but on her side of the family was dairy farms and horse riding. So, mm. uh, and the, on my dad's side was all boating and scuba diving. And uh, so I did both. So I rode horses six days a week for six years and, ultimately um, instructed horse riding in Japan. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but I've also been scuba diving since a young age. And now I'm a mother. Um, my son, who's now 21, is um, uh, he's been scuba diving since he was 14. So right. uh, okay. yeah, we've got a, a great love of um, the ocean. And the ocean, I was about to say so, that. Uh, yeah, but um, mm -hmm. I, yeah, I think that uh, just having growing up in a household where there wasn't much money, like any money which did come in was mm. uh, spent on the next shipwreck expedition where mm. you know, Dad would try and find artifacts off the ships uh, for the um, museum. And so a lot of people assume since um, you know, he ultimately designed and built um, what is now known as Sea Life Kelly Tarleton's. But it was, wasn't always easy for my mother because dad was often out to sea and mm. she was running this tourism business and with two young girls, it was my sister and myself. Wow. And uh, yeah, but um, we've just yeah. had a, a passion for life and we appreciate being born in New Zealand. Like, mm. you know, we, I'm a sixth generation New Zealander on both my mum and dad's side. And, um, mm. and yeah, I always say that, you know, remind my son and um, how lucky we are to be uh, living in New Zealand with a pretty good health mm. system and uh, there's lots of adventures to be had and yeah. it doesn't take long to get out to the beach or go to, I don't know, the Greyland Festival or whatever it is. There's things happening, so you just got to make the most of it. Absolutely, and I think you, you touched on a very good point that we Kiwis or we New Zealanders, we call it, and then we are Kiwis and we live a totally different life to all other commercial world that the countries live and their mindset is totally different us wow. we are, as you already said that you know money is not the driven driving force it's the passion it's the things that you like to do it's the things that you wanted to do and you could do it easily in new zealand so that's one of the yeah. uh, highlight of most of the kiwis career that um, yeah. they are very much down to earth kind of and humble mm. um so yeah. that's great so yeah. tell me, tell us something. So you uncovered, so as a child, you were absolutely, and it's good to see that you are right from your, it looks like it runs in the family, the, the ocean or the scuba mm -hmm. diving aspect yeah. and, and the nature, close to the nature. That's yes. probably why you have uh, 
and you have implemented this such a beautiful tourist attraction, Kali Tartan, which is all about nature and the other side of the living beings, you know, mm -hmm. you know human beings, but there are other living beings and you have catered for that. So that's a great kind of uh, yeah. uh, gift to all the yeah. kids over here. Yeah, I think um, Kelly Talton, so dad was very motivated by marine mm. conservation and uh, and mm. yeah, so I'm very involved in marine conservation um, as well. Uh, I'm a, a trustee of the Kelly Talton's Marine Wildlife Trust. Mm -hmm. And so we're trying to help the Hariki Gulf, uh, which is, yes. um, it's basically the, the, you know, the, all the waters around Auckland and uh, yeah. You know, Waiheke, Kauau Island, you name it, around there. And there's a lot of sediment and there's hardly any scallops and there's hardly any crayfish <laughs> left. And there's a lot of kinna, like uh, even, even the seaweeds disappeared. And right. so we're trying to make a difference to that. There's other great organisations out there as well, doing a lot of work to try and make a difference to that area. Mm. And then I'm also an ambassador for the Endangered Species Foundation of New Zealand. Right. And, the, um, and the, you know, uh, that organisation is trying to help New Zealand native species. So uh, it might be anything from, um, I don't know, the uh, New Zealand fairy tern, uh, yeah. which has like 37 birds left in the world, um, mm. uh, from, I don't know, wetter to um, uh, special New Zealand snails to uh, special plants in New Zealand as well. Yeah. So they're not all, you know, the cute, cuddly little yeah. pretty things but they're still um you know if we don't do something about them they mm. will disappear they'll become extinct and you know you look at the maui dolphin or hector dolphin um, yes. the maui yeah. dolphin we've got very few left and uh mm. so if we're apathetic and don't do anything about it uh yeah it won't be long before we don't have them sure and uh you know as, so did, as, as a did... parent I, I want to make sure that i've yeah. tried my best to make a difference and I really believe that we can all make a, a difference in our own little way uh, it might mm. not be through you know marine conservation or, or conservation yeah. but um, there might be something that you know you have within yourself that is mm. some I don't know skills or connection or knowledge that uh, you can uh, be a service somehow to, you know like I do a lot of volunteer things like basically right. everything I seem to do is volunteer Yes. Uh, and um, but you know time is precious but uh, you know you've got to prioritize what you spend your life doing yeah. and um, and yeah but you know just look at yourself and think okay you know what's something I can do can I mm. help the homeless or can I um, sure. pick up the rubbish on the beach or when mm. I see plastic and things like that or can I recycle um, mm. but it all sounds pretty basic but uh, you know, no these are actually what you live yeah, this is what actually you make a difference, no matter how small you feel or how yeah. little mm -hmm. you think, but it yeah. actually creates a lot of difference uh, because you you travel there, you walk there. And so when you walk on a certain street, you want all the street to be good mm. and not yes. for you, but for everyone. So I understand. Mm -hmm. So so Fiona has, um, how did Fiona as a child develop this liking or was it inborn with you that to help the other than humans the species around you and the oh. nature around you were you always like that or were you always um, i think i always had a love for um you know the the sea I, you know i grew up as i said in the bay of islands so mm. uh and you know, dad had a boat, but it wasn't a fancy boat. It was probably the roughest yeah. looking boat around. It was a dive boat. It was winches and things all over it. Nothing mm -hmm. glamorous. And there's no toilet on board. And you know, it was a very basic sort of boat. But um, mm. but uh, yeah, I've just always loved animals as well. Like you know, like right. you know, even uh, you know, like I said about horses. But um, but recently I was really uh, this might sound a bit silly, but I was very upset because. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't have a cat or a dog, but at the aquarium, there's various puffer fish. And uh, I had uh, my favorite puffer fish I had nicknamed, you know, not very original, but called Puffy. Uh -huh. And uh, they only live from, from my understanding. I'm not a marine biologist, but um, mm -hmm. I believe they live about 10, 11 years. And anyway, Puffy yeah. had spent his time and um, 
and mm. had passed away. But uh, you know, I'm going to really miss him. Every time I used to go down to the aquarium, uh, there would be, right. you know, to have this really interaction with, you know, this, he had big black eyes. He was, you know, so interactive. And I think there's, um, you know, a lot you can get from nature and, uh, yeah. You can fall in love with even a puffer fish, you know. So, <laughs> and, and a lot of people don't realize, yeah. You know, also, you know, when people uh, like fishing and um, mm. in recreational fishing and they're catching like a big snapper, yeah. a lot of people don't realize how old these snapper are. So, I'm looking at that snapper going, oh, that's probably about 65 years old. That's like mm. a granddad, you know, and, <laughs> and you're pulling this granddad out of the ocean and he probably doesn't taste that good anymore. He's probably a bit rugged and, um, <laughs> You know, leave yeah, the no. snapper alone. He's, you know, he's, he's, you know, probably still breeding. Oh, yeah, he's, yeah, it makes, um, we need more fish in the ocean. Like sharks have had a really hard time. And, uh, mm. and, you know, I've, I've, with my son and even before him, I've uh, been in the water with a, a wide range of sea creatures. So my son and I went um, up to Vavau in northern Tonga and uh, spent mm. 10 days there. We never stay at resorts. We always stay at the, the cheapest place, you know, owned by the locals and uh, yeah, you know, it's the... nothing fancy, but um, we're there and um, any money we do have, we'll spend on mm. uh, you know, like three days um, snorkeling with humpback whales right up close. Uh, yeah. We're not allowed to touch them, but they're within an arm's reach, literally. And having this amazing experience where, you know, my son and I are literally looking into the eyes mm. or the eye of um, a huge humpback whale. And, uh, and we've also, you know, been in great white shark cage diving and uh, with four male uh, mm. great white sharks. And, uh, and my son and I went uh, in the water with um, seals off Kaikoura. And we're the only people in the water and there was a big male bull seal having a fight with like a male teenager seal. Like they'd had this big fight in yes. front of us and I'm trying to back up, you know, yeah. you know, move away from this and trying to get my son to move back. But we didn't get out of the water. We just sort of watched it. And, um, yeah, we've really had some incredible experiences. But, uh, you know, there um, most people will go to... On holiday, like New Zealanders, you know, they'll go yeah. to uh, Fiji for a holiday and they'll go to Denarau Island and stay in the Hyatt or somewhere fancy. Mm -hmm. But uh, when my son was probably about eight years old, we spent uh, seven days staying with a big Fijian family on a dirt floor, in their dirt floor house. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was just like a tin, tin roof and yeah. they cooked on a fire every morning and... Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, they're like, yeah, you, know, you see sometimes at resorts, you know, you see the geckos, but there were really big lizards, like, you know, it's quite daunting looking uh, lizards there. Yeah. And, and I'd yeah. often send my, I'd organize so that I'd uh, send my son to school and uh, for the day. So uh, Nui and Sa um, Samoa and uh, yeah, but wherever we went, the different island groups over time, you know, Tahiti and things, uh, I'd take a lot of um, brand new rugby balls or net balls mm. and uh, you, you've got to deflate them because you can't fly, you know, in Air New Zealand yeah. with them blown yeah. up. Pop. <laughs> and then I'd write a little black love heart um, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, in permanent marker pen, just a small black love heart and then my son's name, Tane. Mm. And, uh, and he would give um, the kids, you know, these balls and sports yeah. gear or otherwise mm. the school, because often yeah. on the, especially on the small outer islands, yeah. it's amazing what they don't have. And, uh, and for example, when we stayed with that uh, family in Fiji, mm. uh, you know, no, my Tane asked the kids, um, because he, he could only see one toy, which was this really dirty, yucky looking old doll. Mm. And, uh, and he said, oh, when do you get, presents because uh you know and they, i can't remember what they said it was a, they said it's only one time a year mm. and i can't remember if it was their birthday or christmas but uh one time a year and tane thought back about you know his life in new zealand and all the sports gear he's got and the skateboards and bicycles and um sure. and yeah so you know it really put things in perspective for him and mm. uh, yeah and so when we got home we 
picked up boxes and of litter and stickers and all these sort of fun things for kids. And we sent them to the school and, uh, you know, just because we, it cost, you know, it cost so much to actually send them because the postage, these outer islands isn't easy, but, um, but, you know, just not taking things for granted. And yet these children were so friendly and same with the families and, uh, mm. yeah, it's a good learning curve because you don't take things for granted and, yes, yes. Uh, you know, so you got to keep yeah, I, I could see that uh, when I, if I have to ask you, like in your experiences that you said, okay, this is, uh, you don't have a fancy in the mind that I had to do this and do that, but you just go, went along and the, to the nearest and the lowest kind of when people think about that, okay, where do I stay and how do I stay and why I should be staying there? You were not about that. It was more about real experiences that you were yeah. taking from mm -hmm. going to places to places where nobody has probably wished to go mm -hmm. or want to go, possibly, yeah. you know? Yeah, well, one thing in life, like, um, you know, so you've only got a limited amount of time. Uh, mm -hmm. My father died at 47 years old. Seven right. weeks after the opening of the aquarium, he had so many other plans he wanted to do in life. Yeah. Uh, he, it was a do with his heart. And yeah. uh, so um, he certainly, you know, wasn't prepared to end his, uh, you know, that his life would stop so short. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I learned from when I, I was 18 years old, I was living in America as an exchange student uh, with AFS, mm -hmm. going to American high school for the year. And um, even that, like, yeah, you know, I, I, there's, there's definitely something about, like, feel the fear and do it anyway. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, I've, I've done all these interviews and never thought that I'd, you know, be chosen as an AFS exchange student halfway around the world. Right. And, uh, and, yeah, and when I did get it, um, I didn't really want to go because I had to sell my horse. I had to break up with my boyfriend. I had to say goodbye to my closest, um, you know, girl, mm -hmm. uh, girlfriend. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, and I'd never met this family I was going to live with. Mm. Uh, all I really knew about America was from, you know, sitcoms or whatever or, or you know, yeah. movies. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, so it was quite daunting. But mm. I'm so glad I did because yeah. that did change my, my year. But at the same time, my father died seven months into that year. And mm -hmm. so there was horrific. And I, all of a sudden I found myself within 12 hours on an airplane mm -hmm. all the way across from the East Coast of America, you know, to LA, stopping in Hawaii, you know, just to change flights because you couldn't do direct flights then and or back to New Zealand to see the aquarium opened. But, um, yeah, so, you, you know, you've got to make the most of it and um, – and yeah, so and often in, in life, like you, you might have your own personal goals, mm. which other people think are ridiculous and not worthwhile. Uh, mm. And yeah. but you know, if you want to do them, if, you know, like I've I've got goals I really want to do, and um, people think, why would you want to do that? That sounds really odd. Uh, yeah. you know, I'd love to get in the water with whale sharks. So wow. the, you know, the biggest fish in the water, you know, in the ocean. But mm. yeah, there, there's you know they hardly ever come to New Zealand, so you've got to fly quite far, and that's quite mm. expensive to go to you know, Mexico or Philippines or even uh, Exmouth, sort of 1,200 k's north of Perth. So mm. uh, you know it's not going to be the cheapest thing to do, but I'd really love to do that. So mm -hmm. you know, you just you 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 know just make your own personal goals and just mm. work towards it, even if you just do little steps. Um, you know, I'd, I'd love to go to Antarctica and also the Auckland Islands uh, south of New Zealand uh, where there was a shipwreck called the General Grant, which had lots of gold on it, which my dad mm -hmm. led a couple of expeditions to. But it's the Southern Ocean. It's a, yeah. you know, it can be a daunting it's ocean. A, yeah. <laughs> yes. You know, yeah. uh, big, big waves, doesn't matter what size boat you're in. And But I'd love to do that. So these yeah. are things I, I send emails. I you know, I try and make things happen, I give things a go, and hopefully somehow, you yeah, know, yeah. When you least expect it, all of a sudden, bang! You know, one, yeah, one from one email to a phone call to the next, um, your life can change. So, and that's so, one thing I just also just, just um, jump subjects a little bit. So, 
you know, mm-hmm. um, you know I'm, I'm now 55 years old uh, and throughout my life I've known people who have committed suicide and it's just been, you know, mm-hmm. so shocking. But I, I mm-hmm. always say to like, um, you know, some I've met some young people who've, who get depressed and they get, mm-hmm. you know, sad yeah. and things and... Uh, yeah. And even even people in their fifties do when they say have financial problems and things like that. Okay. But just always remember, be patient, um, uh, because from literally from one moment to the next, it can change. Like yes. life is just full of changes. Nothing stays the same. Yes. So if you're really depressed at the moment, life's really mm. you know shitty at the moment. Just mm. just wait. You know, hang in there. Um, you know, talk to somebody. Yeah. Phone call, um, you know, have a cup of tea, whatever. Just uh, don't do anything rash because, mm. uh, you know, if you're that low, you, yeah. you can only go up. You can only go up. So just um, mm. yeah, and think of the family and all the people that do love you. So, mm. so I wanted to ask you. You touched on very, very good point of uh, emotional well-being. That uh, how you make yourself emotionally controlled in your own skin and in your own way rather than depending on others or asking but the good point you made was communication talk mm-hmm. to people and no matter whatever situation no rash decisions there is always a change it is not permanent all these things that you said is absolutely uh, amazingly accurate when it comes to human i i believe the same i'm in that same situation where I don't uh, depress easily or get easily depressed because ultimately it's going to change and and, Mm. uh, we don't have to worry about it. So I definitely agree with that concept. Tell us something that tell me when you had this experience of uh, you going, taking that bold decision and going away. So going outside your comfort zone and Mm. then finding within a few months, your dad no more. It's Mm -hmm. a great uh, setback, uh, very much uh, setback for you. But then you dealt with that, all the situation, and you never said that, okay, now I'm going to leave this and come back, or I'm going to leave that and come back. No rash decision, no drastic decision, but Mm -hmm. just living the life. Tell us something, how was your mental state at that point? And how did you really manage to do the the emotions running through? Yeah, well... You know, I, I had a supportive you know, mother and, and sister, mm. and that made me realize, you know, how vital they are in my life. So, yeah, um, yeah so it affects you that, you know, if my sister and I have an argument, five mm. minutes later, you know, mm. we move on, we got it sorted. Uh, just you got to be forgiving at times. And yeah. also, if you, you know, we all work yeah. in progress. Uh-huh. Uh, if you make a mistake, if you you know yeah. grumpy or whatever, you apologize. You always, I'm always the first person to know if I if I mess up. If, um, mm-hmm. So yeah, you know, just um, be kind to other people, and uh, but also, you know, like owning, uh, up, owning up your responsibilities. You, you, think, you think owning up your responsibilities at all the times yeah. and making that comfortable to others and around you and surround you because there is nothing called this is it and this is the only way or this is the only highway that's nothing of that yeah. sort so. yeah and also um mm. like when when dad died i you know he was still mm. you know I, I realized i was really lucky to that i did have um an interesting father who was you know, mm. He, you know, he was very kind. He, he used to read bedtime stories, or, or you know, to my sister and I. He'd actually create stories a lot of the time, and uh-huh. uh, yeah, I was really grateful for that. But um, that's sort of his his life motivated me to be an archaeologist, mm. and so I did my uh, master's degree uh, and got first class honors from Auckland yeah. University. And I worked as an archaeologist, and mm. uh, even worked um, in American Samoa for a while, mm-hmm. and. Um, that was, you know, this is years ago, but uh, yeah, you don't have to, that's the thing nowadays is that you don't have to choose like one career and stay with it. You can, yeah. you know, there are other, other things you can do in life. Like it's, uh, mm. some people um, are lucky in that they know exactly, oh, right, so I want to go from, uh, mm. this is what I want to do in life. And uh, so therefore they know what subjects they've got to do at university or trade school or wherever it is. 
Um, but there's, you know, you can do many diverse things in life now. So uh, mm. just keep learning, just keep upskilling and you know, have interesting conversations and mm. listen to people and uh, ask questions. And even if you might look like a, you know, bit of a dork uh, you don't actually you know, <laughs> maybe it's a silly question or something you but throw it out there and just ask you know, so. that's why i'm going to ask you one silly question <laughs> tell, me, tell me adventurous you are so fascinated by birds and uh, endangered species and you always uh, wanting to do something as a soul as a human and as a living being do you think that adventurous is one of the major, major driving force that all people should have in some or the other that are adventure? Um, well, I just think adventure is a bit of excitement in life. So adventure yeah, doesn't excitement. have to be... I mean, I've, I've done things like, uh, you know, um, parachuted from 20,000 feet. So oh, wow. we could have breathed oxygen okay. to get up to that level and... Uh, you know, I've done the uh, highest bungee jumps in Nevis, uh, in, in you know, the highest in New Zealand, and uh, mm-hmm. you know, a whole, whole wide range of things. But um, mm-hmm. yes, but it, even just uh, even something as simple as you know, get on your emails and uh, you know, get look up if you live in Auckland, look up Auckland events. Or yes. there's so many different fun, free things happening around. You know, we've got an amazing art gallery, and I've just been this week and seen the Frida Kahlo, uh, Diego yeah. Rivera exhibition, and um, that costs $25, but next door, it's free to go and see the Robin White exhibition, which is fantastic, with huge yeah. tarpa cloths and things, and, you know, we've got um, just so many different festivals happening, and uh, street festivals, and just get involved, you know, do, do yeah. something, and whatever, you know, Whatever your interest is, uh, mm-hmm. you know, it does. You might, it might be something, you know, which is very, I don't know, it's just something quiet, like I don't know, knitting, crocheting. So who knows, mm-hmm. something like that. But uh, just, um, but tell me follow, something. follow your passion and get involved and find out what's going on around town, what yeah. clubs there are, or, mm-hmm. uh, but also be really open. Like um, one thing, I am like I. I like I am uh, very open to opportunities. So mm-hmm. for example, um, about two years ago, it was a really hot sunny day. I was out at Ardmore because they had the, the war birds, the old airplanes flying around, you know, the vampire moths. And anyway, mm-hmm. um, yeah. it was a really hot day and I was waiting for a girlfriend of mine to turn up and, uh, mm. and she, was, um, she was late arriving. Uh, she had an old classic car and anyway, um, uh, and while I was standing there, there were these um, men with all their jeeps because it's just like a military uh, thing. Wow. And they offered me um, a, a seat in the shade. And um, and within five minutes, we, you know, because I'm like, oh, you got jeeps? And I said, well, I learned to drive on a Toyota Land Cruiser. I really like four-wheel yeah. driving and mm-hmm. a four-wheel drive around various, you know, Waitangi Forest and Kumu and I've uh, done quite a bit of foil driving. And they said, oh, well, we're actually organising, uh, we've already organised a, uh, a foil drive trip for um, this Manukau Foil Drive Club from mm. Auckland to Stewart Island. Um, mm. Would you like to come with us? Mm. And I said, yes, mm-hmm. let's, let's do it. Let's do and it. they actually they put me to work. I had to be on the, um, I was in the lead vehicle, I was on the radio, had to learn the sort of terminology to keep the 14 vehicles with like all the families and you know the um, different sorts of four-wheel drives in line, going over, you know, never seen the South Island in that way because we were off the beaten track. So uh, yeah. I'm just saying that sometimes you say just say yes and mm. and make it happen. It's like uh, yeah, yeah, do your research later. And other example, um, I was talking. I actually got a message from uh, a man called Rob Hamill, mm-hmm. who uh, has uh, won like a he rowed the Atlantic and won this big international rowing event from Europe right across to um, the Caribbean with an, yeah. another man called Phil Stubbs. So it took him like 41 days or something. Was, you know, imagine rowing through the night, you know, 24 hours a day in this little bathtub almost. Anyway, he and his wife, and she's like a triathlete, Rachel Hamill, and their three sons, um, they... Uh, they, you know, they've been sailing all, you know, big, large parts of the world on uh, a catamaran, Javelo, mm-hmm. and they have a, a series called Cruising Kiwis. Anyway, uh, I, I just said to him, 
I've always wanted to experience blue ocean, you know, the horizon all the way around. Yeah. And I said, the only time I've actually done that, uh, I was on a big cruise ship and it wasn't really the same as, you know. Like, and he said, well, why don't you join us for a crossing? And so mm. from New Zealand or Whangarei to um, Suva and Fiji via Minerva Reef. Yeah. Uh, and so he said, we're leaving in about two months. And so all of a sudden I'm like, who do I know who's got yachts? And and mm. so contacted whoever I might, you know, even people people who might know somebody who knows the yacht and um, has a yacht. And so I was joining in with the rum races on Friday afternoons down Royal New Zealand Yacht Squadron and just trying to learn and watching YouTube videos and just trying to give myself some sort of sense of what's involved in yachting and sailing. Mm. And so you can just make things happen. And um, mm. yeah. So <laughs> that's great. So tell me, tell me something. After COVID, many people were all in that situation. I can't do this. I can't do that. But here you are, Fiona, going from accepting every single opportunity, no matter whatever yeah. circumstances coming in her way and accepting that. That's amazing yeah. a message also to all and everyone that, you know, you have to come out of your comfort zone. Tell me something, how did you find after COVID or during COVID that yeah. people were restricted in many things to do, but there are uh, always things to do, as you always say, and you always have, accept that. How did you manage your emotional well-being at that point? Um, right. Being um, such an adventurous, being such an open person and not getting to do things that maybe yeah. you wanted to it do. Was, but It wasn't easy. Yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> I think I think I ate too much and probably put on some <laughs> weight, which uh, you know. So drink, I'm huh? definitely a work in progress with um, okay. You know, portion control was definitely a problem for me, but uh, I eat healthy food, but too much of it. So, um, but uh, yeah, I just uh, just tried to what keep any in, positive keep in touch outcomes? With friends you, and you know you, a few phone calls and things like that and hmm. uh, and supporting you know. Supporting people, you know, friends support you and you know, emotionally and vice versa. And I, I talk to my mother every morning. Uh, mm -hmm. She's also in Auckland, yeah. living in Auckland. Which, um, yeah, she's a, a big part of my life. So, um, yeah. And just, you know, involve yourself with people who you love and who love you. But, for example, like my, my son, mm -hmm. uh, he... Uh, so on the day the pandemic was announced worldwide, yeah. Yeah. he flew off. He, really? He, yeah, he went. He uh, flew to Europe via mm -hmm. Asia, where mm. yeah, it was definitely a bit of a worry. <laughs> like, um, but he had decided that despite the pandemic, despite you know the world airports and everything closing down and yeah. this big, you know, terrifying unknown scare for the world. Yeah. Um, Yes. He wasn't going to let that stop him. He wanted to work on a super yacht. And mm. so, yeah, he, he was vaccinated. And uh, actually, he, was, he wasn't vaccinated when he left New Zealand. But because, no, uh, he it, was, be. because mm. it was not easy. If, remember how you had to wait your turn yes. depending on the age group? Yeah. Mm. Anyway, so young people had to, were the last to get vaccinated. And, but uh, when he got there... He got back. He, you know, went to doctors and and um in Germany and got vaccinated. And anyway, so he's been working on super yachts for the last few years. And he's been he's crossed the Atlantic Ocean and the Mediterranean. He's been in Turkey and Malta. He's um you know Spain, France, yeah, Italy, yeah. Montenegro, Croatia. So he's uh, he's now 21. But um he mm -hmm. didn't let it stop him either. It's, it's often it really is about your mindset and yeah, uh, mind, uh, you know, about if you've got a goal and you really want to make it happen, mm. you just you you try every way possible to make mm. it happen. Mm. So mm. use your contacts or look, you know, research online, like find out what organizations are out there or you yeah. know, it's, yeah, just just but there's ways of making it happen. Because it's a long period of time for a human to be in that zone when pandemic happened this was for the first time everybody had to sit at home it was more like a can't do can't go out and can't enjoy the sun the nature the all the things which was very yeah. uh, disturbing for many people who was loving natures like you who mm -hmm. is always in the nature who is always in the outdoors and you want to do those mm -hmm. so 
I wanted to ask you, like, it's a long period of time. And how did you kept your emotional in check and controlled? Oh, oh I think like everybody, I struggled a bit. Um, mm. And yeah, I just, um, just tried to occupy my time and get through it. I knew that it wasn't going to be forever. Mm. Mm. You know, I got heavily vaccinated. <laughs> yeah, Even yeah. I, had, I had friends who weren't, and it was yes. you know, a really controversial subject, but yeah. also my mother had developed breast cancer, and right. so um, you know, I had to be supportive of her and take her to yeah. Yeah. Uh, oncology appointments and things. And Yeah, um, yeah but just, uh, I don't know, just... Uh, Did yeah, you do some... some other, what the, I still got outside, is... go for a walk. Whatever was needed, you know, so to... Um, what did you think as a positive? Time. Did you find any positives in the in those times? Because a different life it was altogether. Yeah. To what you yeah, well, it, it made people reprioritize what is important in my life. Yeah, yes. you know, might be, you know, your family. And your family's not always your biological family. Yeah, family sure. can be your chosen family because... Yes, yeah, there's some people out there who've had a really hard time. I've I've got friends from the you know LBGTQI community, mm. and I've heard some really sad stories about um, some families, uh, maybe due to religion or something like that, uh, yeah. not accepting them for being gay and pray the gay mm. away and all that sort of thing. And and so yeah. they had to they they basically got you know thrown out of the family, and so their family are now their friends. So, uh, but whoever you have as supportive, positive people in your life. Uh, because um, there are a lot of people who, if, if you start leading, mm. you know, a full life, like a, you know, there's, there's people who get jealous, mm. you know, they, and, because, um, and they, they don't want, you know, they don't want to see you, yeah. you know, doing all these things. And, uh, you know, and I, I've had, um, even like so, I, I have a lot of fun with clothes and yeah. uh, something maybe sounds really maybe a bit shallow to some people. Oh, you're right. Woo, where'd you yeah. go? I'm oh, sorry about that. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so often yeah. I wear my hair in a big beehive and mm. uh, wear a lot of vintage clothes. I like I love op shopping, and once again, that doesn't require much money. Mm. But you know, I, I create my own style. I have fun mm. with that. Mm. And through that, I've been asked to judge a lot of competitions um, from yeah. beauty competitions to costume yeah. events to a uh, you know, wide range of fun things. You don't get paid for them once again, but it's, it's yeah. just fun to get involved. And it's Absolutely. an honor to be asked. And, and, you meet, and I'm like, I'm judging Miss Africa, New Zealand next mm. May. And, uh, you know, just meet some really neat people. And, and also they often raise a lot of money for charity. And, yes. uh, and um Anyway, yeah, so uh, just don't be afraid to be yourself. Mm. You know, I find that, you know, I'm very colourful. Yeah. Uh, and and as a result of that, you know, it makes people smile a bit. You know, when you uh, – I'm not all in black and, um, mm, right. yeah, I'm not really into the whole natural look so much, but obviously with scuba diving and a wide range of uh, things I do um, – yeah, I'm not yeah. always wearing makeup and false eyelashes or something, but, uh, mm. you know, just um, don't be afraid to experiment with your style and just have fun with it because um, mm. I find that so many people will come and have a chat to me or, or um, yeah, just I meet strangers where, where I get up. <laughs> people who, who consider strangers who I don't necessarily know. Yeah. But I, I make, you know, I do make friends easily uh, you know find that people are open open up to me because yeah. uh, I look approachable and I am approachable mm. because I'm, I'm very open-minded I'm liberal mm. um, you know I listen to people um, I give people big hugs and you know just uh, yeah you know, but at the same time you've got to be got to yeah. be careful because I've been as um, there's some people who don't like that and I've been assaulted twice uh, and I think I've got mm. a big scar on my forehead where uh, so two men who I wasn't even speaking to, I had not spoken to them. Mm -hmm. um, one uh, just, I was at, you know, but both times I was at like a pretty fancy place. I was all dressed up and I was with um, friends around me. You'd think it'd be a really safe environment. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, there's two separate times. 
a -hmm. year apart. Uh, mm -hmm. One time, uh, this guy who's like six foot five just mm -hmm. reached into the circle of the um, people I was standing with, grabbed my wrist, mm -hmm. and pushed my arm as hard as he could. Okay. Wow. And yeah, and he wouldn't release. It was just unbelievable. Uh, somebody hadn't spoken to or hadn't done anything to. Mm. Um, and uh, and then this other time, uh, you know, I'd been told to go into the special, beautiful room up, up, um, upstairs mm -hmm. in this Ponsonby bar. Mm -hmm. um, and I went with a, a man. I walked in there with um, a mm -hmm. man. And this man came rushing up to me mm -hmm. and just swore really badly. Right, He grabbed me and was pushing me backwards uh, oh. through the door. And, um, and then he baseball threw a heavy glass at my head and I had, Wow. blood pouring wow. down and yeah he didn't touch the man who I was with uh mm. just just me and um and I wasn't I wasn't carrying any alcohol mm. uh you know I hadn't done anything to him but it apparently it had been his party and he can't remember you know there was a whole court case all about it mm. I had to follow that all the way through um it was very emotionally upsetting because um I didn't yeah. know yeah, who he was. I didn't know his name. Um, so all that time when I'm out and about, you know, because I'm very social uh, and, you know, Auckland's a small town. That, yeah, so yeah. there's this man out there and he's free and uh, he could see me again and, and I wouldn't even recognise him, but he might assault me again. Mm. And anyway, uh, but I did, I, with the help of my mum, we, you know, followed all the way through until the, the court case uh, where I did actually speak to the judge. And, um, yeah, so I um, don't know. I'm just saying that it can be a dangerous world out there when you're absolutely. not doing anything wrong. And I think, yeah. I think you have touched a very uh, important point, but also with that kind of circumstances and situation and after effect, which is what disturbs a person throughout for yeah. some time. And dealing with that is one of the challenges that any person goes through and then they take a wrong decision or a rash decision. But yeah. you probably did totally different and you changed the tide of your direction, I would right. say. Well, I did lots of therapy. I decided that, mm. um, yeah, some, there's been various times in my life where, uh, like, you know, after getting assaulted and I'm thinking, you know, you know, People, strange, you know, people say on social media or something and say, oh, but you must have done something. You must yeah, that's what I'm about to say that. Like victim people, blame. Yeah. <laughs> blame me. Always... And I'm like, I don't even know the guy. I hadn't spoken to him. He just, yeah, anyway. So you um, didn't knew these people, both the people you didn't knew, basically. Yeah. No, I, not at all. I didn't no, even no. know their names. <laughs> I'd never met them before in my life. And yeah. No. Anyway. Um, and yeah. yeah, so I did lots of therapy and also... You know, I've been married twice in my life and mm -hmm. uh, and I've been, yeah, I've been emotionally hurt by being cheated yeah. on. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so there's been various times where I've decided to put, you know, either reading self-help self -help books, mm -hmm. um, going to a counsellor. Uh, like you actually, when, you, when your marriage ends, yeah. I think you get like 10 free sessions of uh, counselling. Uh -huh. you, can, you can you can also do marriage counseling together with um, to try and save your marriage, but mm. you can also get solo counseling paid for. I think through ACC or whatever it is. Yeah. Anyway, it's worthwhile to do. Just just do yeah. it if you, yeah, if you ever. No, yes. yeah, just, it's worthwhile doing, and um, and also there's been courses I've done. So Kurik Ashley, who was. Uh, the personal trainer of uh, Tony Robbins. Mm -hmm. and anyway, uh, I went up to North Harbour Stadium for um, a weekend and just sort of drove up there each day. And uh, you end up doing um, fire walks. So two metres of, mm -hmm. um, of burning embers, which they've had big logs burning all day. And then at nighttime, mm -hmm. that's when you've got to walk across these burning hot embers. And, um, and as a, you know, it's very daunting because, uh, yeah. Yeah, but you've got to, he's taught you how to sort of um, get different hemispheres of your brain um, all sure. sort of pumped up. And anyway, so I, I walked the first, um, you know, 
the first time I, I walked it. And then right at the very end, mm. one of my feet got burnt and you feel it, like your skin <laughs> sizzles. You're right. So, and, uh, and, but as you just right, there's a, somebody with a hose right you know, as you step off onto the grass sort of area and then they pull your feet down. Mm. Uh, but because of that, yeah. I said to myself, right, well, you know, the whole idea is feel the fear and do it anyway. Mm. And, uh, and so I went back and I lined up and I walked it again. I did it again. And I hadn't, didn't speak to anybody. I didn't tell anybody that I'd burnt myself or, you mm. know, I just went and lined up and did it again because uh, I wanted to prove to, you know, to myself that, mm. uh, you know, to feel that fear and do it anyway. And I got through it a second time without burning myself. And, um, and, and I just wanted to say also that like, I've had some pretty near-death near death experiences where oh wow okay. uh, so uh, when I was in my early 20s mm-hmm. I um, decided to do what they call a static line solo mm-hmm. parachute jump so mm-hmm. I, I had to climb out this plane and I was out out west at Parakai and nice. climb out along the sort of um, metal bars of the, uh, of the wing and then you release but it's um, there's a strap uh, like a rope that uh, once you jump off, it mm. will pull the rip cord of your parachute. So that's the only thing you don't have to do is pull yeah. the, the rip cord. And so um, I jumped off and I went to do the, uh, you know, this, um, you know, basically the, the rip cord was pulled and and I looked up and the parachute is meant to be kind of flat and out, yeah, but instead. Yeah. It, like this it was like and this. I, I am plummeting towards the ground and mm. it was i was only because it was a static line jump it was a really low jump from like three thousand feet to low the ground is approaching super fast mm. and um and so you know this is what 30 years ago or so and so there's nobody with a little earpiece you know giving you instructions i'm by myself up in the air plummeting Mm. And, and I looked up and, uh, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, we looked up and I saw, right, all these strings are just completely tangled. It's like all these strings were, yes. pieces of them were really tightly tangled. Like, mm. re- and, and I, obviously I had a huge adrenaline rush and I thought, right, was, you know, what are my options? You've got to stop you know, mentally and to go, what yeah. are my options? My options are I can try and untangle those strings somehow, or I can try and pull this, the other, the secondary parachute. Mm. And, um, and I thought, but what if that doesn't work? Yeah. And so I thought, right, I'm going to go for the strings. And mm. I just kicked my legs and with all my strength, I basically undid, like, I right. you know, spun myself. And then after a while, it, it, you know, it sort of it went, it went brrr, and I spun around mm. and the parachute opened. Mm. And I was um, completely off course because, you know, I drifted basically. And, but I, I managed to direct the parachute and I landed on my feet. So it was and a very the most relieved person in New Zealand. I bet it was a very really scary experience yeah. that you had. I mean, yeah. near-death experience, definitely you call yeah. it near-death experience. Yeah, but as soon as I landed, I thought to mm. myself, right, I've got to mm. do that again. Mm. because I've got a fear about it now, so I wow. have to do it again. <laughs> and, of course, my mum and sister and also my you know, um, husband at the time mm. uh, all said, don't be bloody stupid. Like, you will <laughs> um, you know, don't be ridiculous. So, you know, yeah. You've done it once, that's enough. And I said, okay, here's the deal. I'll sit through the last day of the course again, mm. but I am going to do it. I'm definitely going to do it, but I, I promise you I'll sit through the last day of the course again. Mm. And I did, and uh, and I all went well. I took it really seriously, and you know, I wasn't all hyped up. I was really quiet in the plane, and I did it. And mm. uh, yeah, so no, but, um, yeah. So if you're going, if you're ever in a situation where you're probably going to die, or you think, <laughs> oh my god, yeah. my number's up, you've got to stop and consider what are my options. Mm. What have I got available to me? Mm. You know, I've done things with scuba diving where I'm, you know. Uh, yeah, underwater caves and things. And yeah. anyway, um, yeah, so uh, just consider your options and try not to panic. Slow your, bre- your breathing down. Try not to, you know, just, yeah, consider that. And it's amazing what you can survive. 
Yeah. <laughs> and it's amazing, after, it's amazing after survival how much you have got that wisdom and experience to okay. share and to say I've done it and feel good about yeah. yourself that yes I've done it and yeah. no matter whatever situation circumstances you've been through yeah. a lot yeah so no that's amazing um that's great insights Fiona it's amazing yeah. to hear from your experiences yeah. the way yeah. you have Hold right. yourself, also going through all the challenges at a very young age, taking that right. bold decisions at every step of your life. As you always say that it's a calculated risk or whatever yes. that you have taken. Yeah. It's something yeah, that's, amazing. Actually, that's important. Like what you said there about, you know, um, yeah, mm. that's that's something. So, so, okay, all these, whatever venture or whatever the thing is that you want to do. Yeah. Um, so... Uh, one one thing which did cost a bit of money, which um, but mm. you know, my son and I went to Hawaii, and mm. uh, but once again just stay in little local places, and um, yeah. but we decided that you know there's this big active volcano on wow. not on Waikiki but on the big island Hawaii, and uh -huh. um, and yeah, so uh, there's various helicopters and things you can experience the heli um, the volcano with, right. and. Um, but I wanted to do the extra adventure with the one the helicopter with no doors, so oh. like your arm outside. I think so. The wind bloody whistling you, through. You, but, uh, but, you're uh, a but real I, fearless, Fiona. <laughs> you're not fearful. You're fearless. Yeah. Well, no, but I'm not silly either. And that. Um, no, I mean. So I, yeah. I did, yeah, but yeah, I, but I did you know, a lot of research. I, so there's different companies, uh, mm. and and I'm like, okay, so which which is the best safety record for the helicopter companies and then i then i did research about at all, all the helicopter pilots who's the best helicopter pilot and so i decided to go to this one particular company and mm. then i knew that i wanted this pilot who had just um, flown in afghanistan yeah. getting all these american military guys out of battle and uh he'd been front line and um and yeah so i thought if anybody's going to get us out in any trouble if we have to crash land onto the volcano um he'll be the one to get us out and uh, so we were flying 50 minutes right over the whole crater watching the lava right below us you know like this orange leaping lava yeah. And, yeah. and 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 when i did that um highest tandem parachute jump in new zealand yeah you could, it was only one place at the time you could do that which is mm -hmm. uh fox glacier and yeah. uh there's um but you know a month beforehand, I'd already researched all there's like 12 different instructors. Right. And I knew that the one I wanted was, uh, what was his name? Was it Henry or Harry or, oh, anyways, um, mm -hmm. uh, I knew it was this one particular guy because he'd been uh, working there the longest. He knew, he knew that um, that area, he, uh, he had done so many jumps. And then mm -hmm. when I, and so I emailed saying, oh, look, you know, I um, you know, want this guy and uh, like yeah, he's definitely working that day right and I yeah I'm not going to be jumping with anybody else I want him mm -hmm. and uh, and yeah so I made sure that you know I when I did do this uh, this highest tandem parachute jump that um, mm. it was with him and also when I arrived I found out that he just had a, um, his wife and he had just had a baby so that made right. me feel even more rest assured that uh, yeah. You know, he this guy wants to live. He's you know, we're gonna be landing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The one more thing that I wanted to just touch on that, you know, you talked about um like opportunities not to miss saying yes to all great opportunities despite yeah. your fear and yeah. everything. It doesn't have to be every opportunity. If you've got a gut feeling, if your instinct is telling yeah. you mm. you can't trust these people or something's up about this. Listen to your instincts. I'm not saying do so everything. How do you self talk to yourself? Tell yeah, me something. How, right. do you, how do you self talk to yourself? Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah, that's I'm right. confident and I'm doing this and I can do this right. and there is nothing wrong and it. I'm easy, mm -hmm. okay, you know? So yeah. that is all acceptance of the adventure that come in our way and in everyone's lives. All that's the right. Other. But it's the acceptance yeah. of it, right? Basically. What yeah. you're saying is to accept it just the way you have to receive and just the way you receive, basically. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm thinking, like, tell me, uh, 
we are now almost going to close this. Uh, just wanted to uh, touch on the last bit of it was, uh, so the positive outcomes, or do you always do things with a view or as a condition that you act or you just go with the flow that you think being a very fearless, fearless person and also adventurous person and also... It, it gives me a little bit of uh, emotional mindset that we have. Everybody has got different mindset. But what do you see yourself? What will be your message? Like, okay, do you do it spontaneously or do you plan or do you have conditions to do something? How do you react to all the different things that comes in? Right. Your way? Hmm. Yeah, well, um, a, a bit of both. I, I definitely huh. plan. Uh, like with my time, I, I have a, a mm -hmm. I'm old fashioned, and then I've got a book diary. Oh and yeah. I, um, and because I'm often helping my son with things as well, even if he's halfway around the world, I'm still yeah, uh, yeah. very involved in his life, and I'll research for him. So if he's going to a certain area, mm. um, I want him to know what's really worthwhile. What's really, yeah. uh, also, what what dangers might be there. Um, and when he was in Mexico, I was worried, you know, there's kidnappings and all that sort of thing, which, you know, go on. But, um, yeah, just, uh, you know, like, let me give you an example where, um, so I, you know, sailed to um, Fiji and mm -hmm. with um, Rob Hamill and family. Mm -hmm. And then uh, about a day or so out from Fiji, mm -hmm. I got really sick. Uh, I was in serious pain. And okay. that serious pain stayed there for about six days. Mm. And uh, until I decided that, because I thought it, we'd run out of um, fresh drinking water and we had a, a machine that um, turned, you know, salt water into fresh water. And I thought it was something like that, some gastro problem. So I was trying to ride it out and I thought I'd get better, but I wasn't getting better. So I ended up going on a, you know, this local bus ride all four hours all the way around to uh, the airport and flew back. I didn't tell anybody on you know the flights because I knew they wouldn't let me on the plane mm. uh, I got back to New Zealand and ended up in hospital in New Zealand and um, told that I had an extremely inflamed appendix and I'm lucky to be alive and uh, but I was also thought well I'm really glad that I'm in a New Zealand hospital and you know, yeah so, um, I know and, it's uh, so yeah, but, but so I, I was in hospital there for about I don't know eight days or so and I got this message from a, a, a designer, a clothing designer, a um, person called Lennon, and mm -hmm. who had been on um, a, a TV show, yeah. uh, was it Project Runway New Zealand? Anyway, he asked me, um, New Zealand Fashion Week's coming up at AATS Centre, um, would I um, model uh, you know, would, yeah. would I be a model for him? Yeah. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I was in my 50s. <laughs> and I'm mean, a bit overweight, you know. I'm not, I'm no skinny size eight or anything. And um, and and I, he didn't know that. Uh, I don't think he knew that I was in hospital, and I couldn't even stand up. Then I had all these drains in me. Mm. Uh, I couldn't even walk properly then. And he was talking about in two weeks' time, mm. and I just said, "Yes, I can do that. <laughs> yes, you know, just, you know, I'd love to. Thank you." <laughs> and um, yeah, and actually. One good thing was that, you know, the appendix and not eating, I actually did lose a bit of weight, so I looked all right. <laughs> <laughs> Managed to fit into the clothes. And, uh, and yeah, and right before, so here I was on the main runway of New mm. Zealand Fashion Week. Mm. And um, I find that one thing which really important, uh, what works for me, you know, is, is um, right before a walkout, or if, if there's anything you're going to do, whether it's public speaking or anything which makes you nervous about, uh, like that, often I'll just stand for a moment, I'll close my eyes, and I'll give myself positive self-talk. Mm. And, uh, and I, you know, do good posture. I put my shoulders back and try and you know, have a bit of a stretch and, um, good, you know, good posture and, uh, and tell myself, Oh, you know, you look gorgeous, or Absolutely. you know, you, you, you look amazing. Everybody's going to love you, and you're going to walk really steadily. And you're not going to, you know, mm -hmm. don't even say you're not going to fall over. You're going, I'm going to be walk confidently and steadily, and I'm going to do my turn. I'm going to get to the end, and yeah. and, uh, and really just doing that, just taking that little bit of time yeah. to, for me, close my eyes and center myself, 
yeah. and uh, get my posture right and my thoughts right and just do it and just just do it. Yeah. Do it, and then afterwards it's like, woohoo! <laughs> you did, did it. it. I, did it. <laughs> I didn't fall over. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> and people didn't make any big. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, uh, no, I, I think I think that tells a lot about the confidence that you have, and you have grown, and every time you we grow from incidents and circumstances that we face, but mm. putting those confidence into reality or. Mid- in implementing those and really living that the way as per that confidence is the key for our uh, success as a person or as a human. Success is not money making or property making or all that. To me, success is all these little things that you said, like passing through, going through it, and then making it your own. And then also like, you know, uh, self-talking what you said there and, uh, asking yourself that I'm going to do this and I will do it. Be respective of whatever physically, mentally your situation, circumstances was. Yeah. You had come out of that every time, basically. Right. Yeah, I think um, mm. it's, something, it's, it's really about being your own best friend. Right. Okay, so, uh, you mm. know, what would your best friend say to you uh, before you did, did something you, know, you you if you're nervous about something if you're scared about something um what would your best friend say because you don't have to listen to all that negative shit that's going on right. in your brain at the moment because we've all got negative self chatter and uh, mm. there's also yeah you know, there's always going to be things we're not happy about ourselves with you know like i said we're all works in progress yeah. um you know people have different addictions uh it can be anything from Drugs to food to um, yes. gambling, you name it, whatever their thing is. But yeah. um, you know, yeah. there are ways through. Uh, you can build up your confidence, and you can, you, you know, it was, um, yeah. Just just try and be your own best friend. Be kind to yourself. Mm. It's not always easy because uh, mm. you know there are times where we're going to feel a bit low because life can be really tough and stressful and challenging. But um, I think there's, you know, there's going to be good people who will support you, who, absolutely, you know, and uh, and you know, I, I think if you're a good person, you're going to attract good people as well. But, but yeah. you always be streetwise. Don't don't be naive. And there's mm. all, can also be people who want to use yes. you for, you know, yeah. their, so be very careful. You know, don't don't be silly. Like, mm. Yeah, I think. Yeah, um, just like when I say that, don't be silly by drink driving. It's a silly, it's yeah. a silly, silly mistake. <laughs> don't do right. that. You can drink, but you don't have to drive. Yeah, drinking, yeah, so. that's right. That's right. Yeah, I, think, so. I think very well said that. Okay. Uh, uh, so, yeah. no, thank, thank you. <laughs> thanks, Fiona, for your great insights. As listeners, you can see Fiona has gone through lots of things and don't think she's just a Kelly Tarleton or well, she's just the daughter of the Tarleton, but she's a human being first and foremost. And the second thing is she has lived her journey. As you can see, what we can learn or seek from that is lots of challenges she has faced, lots of decisions that she has taken at a very young age and to go through and come through this first stage and then dealing with all that by her own mindset and by how changing the direction of her thinking and thought process and mindset is what is important for all our emotional well-being no matter whether we are in covid whether she had a violence violent attack or anything but it's all happens some to someone everything happens to everyone some or the other and the question is how do you go about it and how do you change your life's journey about it that's more important so today we had this great pleasure of <laughs> Fiona who is not just uh, in um, is not just a very uh, humble and human being but she has shared her experiences and wisdom for all of us to understand that life is too short but life is also adventure because she's adventurous so life is an adventure in reality anyway everything that you face you don't know what it is you will receive accepting that and moving is the most important key thing that i learned from you fiona so i really appreciate this great what will be your final message to the oh. audience who are listening by secret tell me. um i think uh... Yeah, just create your life 
have have as much fun as you as you know as yeah. you can create and whatever your passion is follow that through mm. uh yeah don't don't uh, listen to people who try and drag you down yeah if, yeah just um it's your life and look after the ones you love and who love you and surround yourself with good people and good information you know just be grateful be very grateful about you know yeah. living in New Zealand and the life we've got and the, there's a lot of agencies and organizations who um are there to help as well to help. Don't, yeah, don't forget to help too where you can with mm. any sort of volunteer work or True. You, know, just, uh, you know be a good person mm. No, that's a great message, Fiona. You have to communicate. You have to talk to people if you are in trouble or this. Not keeping for yourself, but uh, just communicating is a key thing. So here you are, Fiona. Not is a Fiona is a colorful life that she has got, and she is still maintaining that, and she is keeping doing that. That's the best part of it. No matter what state you are in in life, and you accept as a, so. Once again, thank you, Fiona, for this great yeah. insights. I well, really appreciate it. And we would love to bring you back on certain different topics that you could All touch right. on and give us uh, some good uh, feedbacks, okay? Okay. That would be, that well, would be you let me know a bit more about that and you and yeah, I can... yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. But no, for right. today, absolutely, for all the P listeners, uh, real reflections. This is all real connections, real reflection. This is all about human connections. And this is all about real, real human talking, real things and not from the book. But so Fiona is uh, in self. I, I personally like to say Fiona is a book in itself. So if you, want to know, <laughs> if you want to know more about Fiona, you can definitely give us a feedback and ask us anything. And then we can pass on to Fiona. So, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I thank appreciate you. Uh, yeah, thank you, you and we'll, chat with we'll, me. we'll chat soon. Okay. Right. Brilliant. Thank you.